OK, uh, I assume I can now be heard and I want to welcome all members of the public and all members of the commission and staff to uh, this public meeting of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. We have one item on the agenda this morning, a decisional matter on what we call the fiscal year 2021 mid-year two proposal. Today's meeting will address the extra funding given to CPSC in the recent American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, as I refer to it. This is money that is to be spent over the course of five years with a major focus on addressing product safety concerns arising from the COVID pandemic crisis. Specifically, we've been directed to the following purposes. To carry out the requirements of Public Law 116-260, which among other things imposed a number of new legislative duties uh, on the Commission, such as implementing a new standard for furniture flammability and implementing a new standard for portable fuel containers. Uh, also to enhance the agency's port staffing capabilities, especially with respect to targeting and screening of COVID-19 products entering through traditional ports and de minimis shipments entering through traditional ports and um, lately other specialized ports. Uh, third, to enhance monitoring of internet websites for the offering of sale of violative goods with a focus on COVID-19. Fourth, to increase awareness and enhance communications, especially about COVID-19 hazards. And finally, to improve the agency's data collection and analysis systems, especially with a focus on underserved communities dealing with the COVID crisis. So our task today is allocate funds from these dollars for the remaining six months of FY 2021. Uh, as you can see, staff proposes to allocate roughly $5 million to fund 28 FTEs, which would be at a cost of uh, $1.7 million, and to contract for roughly $3 million for contract and equipment expenditures. In addition, staff has set forth a tentative plan for annual expenditures for the remainder of these funds. Please note, we are not voting on any funding strategy for years beyond FY 2021, but to staff's credit, we've been given a fairly clear idea of their notion of how that strategy should unfold. Needless to say, future commissions will be the ones to decide expenditures and future op plans. Uh, just a note in passing, uh, implicit in what the ARPA does is require, not implicit, explicit to, require additional staff. That brings recurring expenses, which are not covered in ARPA. And of course, that greatly concerns me uh, because I don't have to agree to a substantial increase in staff. And then at some point when the funding runs out, having to lay them off. So I hope Congress is listening. Uh, that said, I just want to thank staff again for their vision for the future. It really seems carefully thought out and I like it a lot. We have several staff members present in the event there are any questions in the opening round. With us are Mary Boyle, CPSC Executive Director, Dwayne Ray, CPSC Deputy Assistant Executive Director, James Baker, Chief Financial Officer, and Joe Martiak, Director of Communications. Other staff are available as needed. So I wanna thank all of the staff for being here today. Uh, we're going to begin with questions for staff if there are any. Each commissioner will have five minutes for questions and we can go multiple rounds if necessary. After the questions are complete, I will then move a vote on mid-year and entertain any amendments to the plan. Uh, and as a starting point, I have no questions. Commissioner Kay, do you have questions? I don't, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the staff for the quick and thorough work. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Biacco, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks again. And Commissioner Feldman, do you have any questions for staff? Thank you, Acting Chairman Adler. I, I do have some questions. Um, first, I, I wanted to ask about uh, the, the port staffing provisions in, uh, in, in the plan that's proposed. So in the FY21 appropriations bill, Congress instructed CPSC uh, to the maximum extent feasible to station inspectors with the goal of covering at least 90% of the consumer products that are entering the U.S. And I've seen at least three different terms in, uh, in, in, in sort of the agency parlance. Uh, screened, covered, examined. I've seen these terms used to describe how we, how we might meet the congressional goal of 90% of, of consumer products entering the United States. And I, I'm, I'm curious, and I guess this is to Mary and Dwayne, is staff using these terms interchangeably? Uh, 
I'm happy to, to give it a shot. Um, I, I, it's not our intention to use them interchangeably. Uh, we have been uh, using the term coverage to indicate we have uh, a port person at a port of entry. Um, and we've used that 90% figure to indicate of all of the ports that we have risk assessment through the RAM, whether or not we have someone assigned to that port to do um, uh, inspections. Um, and we use the term screening to actually indicate we've uh, pulled a, uh, uh, an importation and have inspected the, the contents of that. Okay, so when, when the, the mandate refers to covering 90%, what, what, what we're all, I mean, we're all saying the same thing, that, that we're talking about physical in-person uh, actual screenings of, 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 of the risk scored uh, uh, products in the RAM. Well, I, I wouldn't use the word screening. I would say that we have people assigned to ports of entry. To be able to be available to screen. Scored. Correct. Okay. Um, how did staff determine that adding the, the four new inspectors or the, the four inspectors at Newport was the, the best use of the additional uh, 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 four inspectors versus supplementing existing port coverage at our highest volume ports? I mean, I think I'll jump in there and Dwayne, please, uh, you know, uh, supplement as needed. Uh, I think those are the next additional ports that we've identified where there's the highest volume of potential risk. So we wanted to expand the breadth of where we were able to cover. And that was the rationale. Dwayne, okay. feel, so, free to, feel free to supplement that. Yeah, I, I think, um, Commissioner, we, we talked about our percent coverage and, and trying, to, trying to aim toward that 90%. Um, you know, we're looking at locations that increase those percentages. Right now, we're roughly with the assistance of our field staff in that 83% kind of ballpark. Uh, if the commission approves this plan as presented, we believe that'll get us closer to 87. And then I think over the next couple of years, if we continue to staff up, we'll, we'll definitely be approaching those, those numbers. Okay, so you think with the, with the additional hires, that we're, and this, you're, you're, thank you, you're, you're reading in exactly where I'm going with this. Um, you know, the, the, the goal in, as stated in the legislation said covering, not, not, not cover 90, but, uh, uh, to, to, to make best efforts essentially to get as close to 90 as, as, as we can. Uh, right now, the, 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 the current coverage is somewhere in the low eighties. And you think with the new additions, it's going to bring us not necessarily past, but towards 90. Yes. Um, has staff made any changes to the RAM in the past couple of months? And, and does that affect, affect how we're calculating this coverage ratio? I wouldn't um, want to comment publicly on any of our targeting changes, but happy okay, to- Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Thank you. Um, if maybe we can touch base offline and, and, and go in depth on that, I do have some questions. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Um, let me let me switch gears a little bit, and uh, I want to be respectful of time. I know that we had five five minutes, but I, I still have a, a number of questions. Bob, how am I doing? Uh, you're fine, uh, Peter. As I say, I try to be flexible up to a point, and so uh, I would ask you to be mindful of that. But please feel free to ask your questions. Well, if you would kick me under the virtual table when I'm getting uh, up to up to that point, I'd appreciate okay, that. Okay, that's fair. Sure. Um. I wanted to ask a little bit uh, about the, the communications provisions that are um, that, that are called for in the plan. Um, during the mid-year one discussion on my influencer amendment, uh, Commissioner Kay made the point that the burden of proof uh, is with the proponents of the expenditures and, and not the uh, opponents to, to demonstrate effectiveness. And while I don't want to put words in his mouth, uh, and he can correct me if I'm misstating any of this, uh, the, the, with 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 specific to influencers, I think the larger point is particularly relevant here uh, that 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 we, we need some answers about the expenditures for the, the proposed outreach strategies. Um, and of course, I'm aware that uh, the congressional mandate is to increase awareness uh, and, and comms is, is related to that. But, uh, but, but we also uh, have to make sure that the, the approaches that we're taking uh, achieve the goals that Congress envisioned. So to get to the specific questions, 
Um, the proposed CO poisoning campaign uh, description in, in, in the plan states that OCM will use a, quote, variety of approaches, collaborations, and concepts, including strategically targeted email messaging, improved digital initiatives, and innovated, market, uh, innovative marketing strategies. And if I was asked, I'm not sure I can tell you exactly what those words mean and, and what we're actually spending the money on. Uh, Mr. Martiak, can you explain what, using these examples, uh, uh, what, what these descriptions entail? Thank you for the question. Uh, two things. One is what we put into the proposal is a broad range of possibilities. And the second point is what's in the plan for this year is to draw up a strategic plan on how to approach this. And then that comes back to the commission as far as the actual implementation goes or choosing at what level and what tactics. And so uh, it's premature at this point to be saying which of those tactics it would be. What I was trying to emphasize there was, and what the team was trying to emphasize was, this was the broad range of possibilities of looking at different approaches. But the funding that we're talking about today is to actually have an effort made to draw up that strategic plan. And then that comes back uh, going into the next fiscal year when the commission votes on an operating plan. Okay. Uh, again, then I, I'm not entirely clear what we're being asked to spend money on. And it sounds like you haven't uh, thought this all the way through because my next question was going to be, you know, of the proposed path forward, you know, what evidence you have that, that a particular technique or, or communications tactic is going to be more effective than another. But I, I'm not hearing any particularized uh, any particularized, hey, this is how we would like to approach these campaigns. I would say that we have thought this through at this point, Commissioner, because this is a request to get outside expertise to the table to help to flesh out this kind of a plan. Okay, but you're our, our in-house expert, yes? Uh, we have several experts, obviously, in OCM, but it, and for the size of this campaign that we're thinking about, and the seriousness of the campaign. That is why we're looking for outside help on this and input on it, just as we have on some of the other major plans that we have. Okay. Um, Bob, how am I doing on time? I just have a couple more you're, questions. You're, yeah, uh, one or two more, and then I'm, I am gonna have to, uh, I'm not gonna okay. literally- Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking to, to take up more than my share. Um, I guess this, this last question that, that I'll ask is probably to Mary and Dwayne, um, and, and frankly, uh, uh, our general counsel and, and, and Jim Baker as well. Uh, but it has to do with what's called for in the plan for uh, operational support staffing. Um, in, in the mid-year two plan, there's an increase for enforcement staff, uh, and with an increase, uh, 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 with, with increased enforcement staff, it, it frankly makes sense that they're going to see an increased workload and therefore uh, it may be called for for some additional operational support. Um, but I, I really don't have a sense of, you know, what the historical ratio of EXRM and, and financial management staff to other employees has been and whether the additional um, sort of uh, uh, the, 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 the additional support staff that's called for scales in a way that, that historically tracks with, with what we've seen um, in, in previous years. So can you talk about that a little bit? I'm, I'll start and but please uh, James and Dwayne jump in as necessary. I do think we looked at ratios in terms of the work uh, that we would be adding and my sense is that we were very conservative and that we added only one FTE for each of the uh, support operations. Uh, my guess is that probably that underestimates the work that would be needed if we're going to be scaling up in terms of the FTEs that we're adding uh, in import. So but because uh, we are embarking on a, a hiring at a scale that we haven't uh, in a long time, we wanted to be conservative to start uh, with the hiring and we added one in each of the uh, main units for operational support. But, okay, you, you say uh, it's conservative, but, but again, um, you, you can't tell me what the historic ratio of, of, uh, of, of import staff to support staff has been? Um, I would ask James if I know that we did uh, look at ratios, uh, so I don't have them off the top of my head, but if James or Dwayne uh, has additional information on that. Um, sure. I, I, if I can jump in, we, we did our first cut um, 
looking at ratios and um, on a purely like total number of staff in the agency and then what portion of that is support staff and it gave us some really big numbers that just uh, did not feel like the correct starting off especially since we're kind of gradually uh, staffing up here but we knew a couple of key things if the commission approves this plan we're hiring up a bunch of people so we need another hr specialist to help in the support and hiring up of that we knew it systems and the support for the user base is growing and we're we're challenged to continue to support especially in, in all of this remote and hybrid environments that we're in um, and then we also knew with the added um, requirements for tracking how we're spending the money and, and, and the reporting out on that, we need some support in James team <clears throat> and also the additional support in the general counsel for, for these, uh, this, this area. So, you know, we did look at ratios, but we also kind of did a gut check to say, well, that, that seemed a little too much if you just purely went down the ratio path. And so as Mary was saying, we're trying to start out, you know, kind of not, not let numbers drive us purely, but at least a good starting point to, to try to anticipate what we know is going to be a growth here. Uh, it it sounds like you don't have the numbers immediately at hand, but what I would ask, and, and, and then I'm done, uh, Bob, uh, is is uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing what the historic ratio has been. I mean, it sounds like that what you're calling for here is conser conservative relative to the historic ratio, but uh, again, I, I just, I'd, I'd love to know some particulars on what that looks like. Yeah, sure. so that's about the, the ratio is about three FTE for every 10 that are higher. Oh, okay. Thank you, James. Okay, succinct and uh, to the point. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, having heard no further questions, and let me be certain are there other questions? Uh, Commissioner K. Biaco and I have no further questions. Okay, uh, then staff, uh, you are now excused. Uh, thank you for your input. Uh, you can move to a listening mode. Uh, and thank you for all of your excellent work on the plan. Uh, I am now going to move that the commission adopt the mid-year plan as proposed by staff. And that is a motion. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you so much. Uh, and of course, before putting the mid-year plan uh, as proposed by staff to a vote, I will now entertain any amendments to the plan that the commissioners may propose. I have no amendments. Commissioner Kay, do you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioner Biacco, do you have any amendments? I believe I you're <laughs> I, I don't. Thank you. Thanks so much. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? Uh, thank you, uh, Bob. I, I do have some amendments. Um, and if, if they're in order, I, I'd, I'd love to introduce uh, uh, Feldman One. Yeah, and uh, let's do it the way we did on mid-year one, which is we will go through each Feldman amendment uh, and you will uh, describe it uh, for up to three minutes after that. I'll ask for a second, then we'll have any questions or comments, and then we'll put each one to a vote. Okay, and well, so there's only four this time, so hopefully this will go a little bit okay. uh, smoother than, than, than last time, uh, or at okay. least more efficiently. So uh, uh, I'm offering uh, Feldman 1. Uh, uh, COPF 1 is an amendment to prohibit spending on non-governmental spokespeople. Uh, less than three weeks ago, we approved an almost identical amendment regarding the commission's use of uh, celebrities, actors, social media influencers, personalities, and other non-governmental spokespeople. Uh, and this amendment would uh, do the same for the campaigns that are contemplated in, uh, in, in mid-year 2. Uh, as I said then, uh, the commission should approve either on a case-by-case -case basis or via uh, 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 an inclusive directive uh, that the use of taxpayer dollars on compensating actors and, and influencers uh, uh, w w would be approved in that manner. Um, I I'd also hope that, that we'd be able to find individuals that are, are willing to engage with us on PSAs on a pro bono basis uh, so that we can use our, our scarce resources on other things. Um, I believe that we should have a directive governing uh, this type of activity by now. Uh, we were promised one. Uh, that's not the case, but I, I, I think, therefore, again, I'm, I need to offer this amendment uh, to make sure that there are, are safeguards in place for, for the commission funding. Um, as was the case during mid-year one, I don't intend this amendment to interfere with existing contracts. It's perspective. 
Uh, but I, I, I would want to thank everybody for their consideration, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you for describing your amendment. Uh, we need a second. Is there a second to this amendment? I second it. Thanks so much. Um, and now we will proceed for commissioners to uh, ask uh, Commissioner Feldman any questions or make any comments. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, you're correct. This is the same uh, amendment or substantially the same that you introduced with respect to mid-year one. I opposed it then. I continue to oppose it. It's uh, not that I am a huge fan of influencers and to the extent we could get influencers pro bono, I'm all in favor of that. But uh, speaking for at least future chairman of the agency, I think this intrudes uh, unreasonably into management responsibilities and it feels to me like micromanagement. Uh, and so I'm going to oppose it and th those are my comments. Commissioner Kay, any questions or comments that you have? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to Commissioner Feldman, just some clarifying questions about the amendment as I read it. It permits influencers to be used on a pro bono basis with the commission approval is that correct yes it's the same amendment that i offered uh it, it to, to mid-year one and it also permits if there is a majority of commissioners who agree on a directive it would then supersede this amendment and it would permit the use of influencers pursuant to whatever the terms of that directive is correct that's right. And that allows for some future flexibility for uh, the four of us or a future constituted commission uh, to put their stamp on, on on what this policy might look like. And, you know, this has not come up before, but and I don't know, maybe the general counsel wants to weigh in or maybe you want to start Commissioner Film with your intention, at least. Since this amendment is pursuant to a mid-year, which is modifying an operating plan for fiscal year 21, I view that as similar to an appropriations rider where this would expire at the end of 2021. What is your intention with this amendment regarding its lifespan? Uh, the, the amendment as offered, and frankly, the amendment as previously offered during mid-year one is very specific to the campaigns uh, to which it, it applies. Um, again, it's not retroactive, uh, but uh, when I offered this, uh, uh, two weeks ago now, it applied to um, just the, the, the individual campaigns that were specifically called out in the mid-year. Um, and, and likewise, uh, this amendment is intended to modify Section 4 of the plan as set forward by staff uh, and, 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 and would apply only to, um, only to those campaigns that, that, that are called for. There's a campaign on, uh, that's targeted towards youth. There's a CO campaign. Uh, and, and there's a, 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 a flammable uh, a, a portable fuel container uh, a campaign that, that's contemplated right now. And do you envision that extending past this fiscal year or only for the funds that are approved by the commission for those plans for this year? This amendment would only apply uh, to, to, uh, to, to those specific campaigns. It's my hope uh, that, that so we don't have to keep doing this every time a, a new campaign is proposed, uh, that we can all work together on, a, on an overarching directive um, that, that, that establishes commission policy for, for uh, these types of expenditures and, and the use of influencers. We haven't done that yet, um, but, but right now uh, th this campaign would, would, would apply to, uh, to, to just those campaigns that are, that are, that are listed. Got it. So it, I see it, it not only... I see it not only applying to those campaigns that are listed, I see applying just the funds for this fiscal year for those campaigns. But your larger point, I agree with completely, which is that there is, uh, there could be an, uh, an effort underway to resume the directive. I know that the last time that there was that my office provided uh, robust feedback to that draft, we're ready to do that again. And so I see many paths forward if there is a desire for the use of either unpaid or paid influencers. So with those paths that you provided, I plan to support this amendment. Thank you, and I appreciate your support, Elliot. Uh, thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Kay and Commissioner Biacco. Any questions or comments for Commissioner Feldman? You're muted, Dana. I said I, I do, and uh, Commissioner Feldman, I think that this amendment, the one you raised to uh, it was a couple weeks ago, and your questions to Mr. Mordiak today 
all support and establish once again that if um, we had a communications plan that I moved for during the operating plan, we wouldn't be here having to do this in piecemeal. We would have an understanding of what campaigns we had, how much they were going to cost, um, the size and the seriousness I heard is very important, but we have no planning. And I heard today that we're going to be hiring outside. This should all be done and approved um, before the, um, you know, before we get into this piecemeal thing. So from that perspective, I would support it. However, and I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And nobody has been a bigger champion of uh, planning for this particular office than you've been. Thank you. Um, I, I will, though, add one caveat. I am not against paying uh, actors or influencers in certain circumstances. Um, so I, if your amendment is designed to uh, carve them out completely, um, I, I need to know that. Because in this day and age, whether I love it or not, um, influencers are, are effective in certain circumstances. And as we have discussed on more than one occasion, we aren't reaching some of the people we need to reach, um, especially if they are practicing getting their messages like old people like me. And we have lots of young mothers out there who do things differently than, than I did. And I think that sometimes influencers and or actors um, really can help. So I'm not against that. I just, what I want to do is see um, a, a presentation on why we need them, what the cost is. And I think there should be commissioner commission approval on those things, not just having someone in our communications department make that determination um, as they see fit. So I, I just want to clarify that your amendment here is not designed to exclude outside sources completely but what you're saying is they won't be um, paid for without seeking commission approval first. Uh, no, you're absolutely right, and your understanding is, is, is correct. It, it allows for that, but with the uh, approval of the commission. Okay. All right. With that, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. I just did want to make one comment, uh, and I, I must uh, take issue with the notion that the commissioners have not been consulted with respect to education campaigns. Back in December, we circulated a draft of something like 25 education campaigns and asked for feedback on those campaigns, and they were described in full. And it, to the best of my knowledge, we've we've heard no feedback on that. So, uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, uh wait a minute. We get these things, Bob, often at two o'clock with a note from somebody in communications that says we plan on running this. Um, at uh, close of business. That's that's not a description. That's not acceptable to me. And sending us, you know, uh, generic forms like we heard today is not um, a communications plan. And and I, I would have to take issue with that point and, and why we well, raise this. We, we do have a, a, a good faith disagreement, but I think that you would you were given uh, the specific education campaigns with with descriptions. But this is something that we can explore further. I think right now let's focus our attention on the vote. And so uh, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, I'm going to call for the vote. Uh, Commissioner Kay, how do you vote? I vote aye. OK, Commissioner uh, Biaco, how do you vote? Yes. And Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote no. The votes are three uh, yay and one no. The uh, amendment by Commissioner Feldman is adopted. Commissioner Feldman, your second amendment, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, Feldman 2 is an amendment to ensure transparency in meeting that 90% screening goal that we talked about during questioning uh, and that Congress called for. So in the FY21 appropriations bill, Congress directed CPSC towards screening 90% of all consumer products entering the United States that are risk scored in the RAM. And uh, according to our own uh, staff provided statistics, during the pandemic, screenings fell significantly. And for the fiscal year to date, screenings are still down, even based on where we were last year. Uh, the, the reporting that Feldman 2 calls for will achieve transparency and help the commissioners, frankly, understand uh, how and if CPSC is achieving the 90% screening over time. Um, frankly, it, it will also help the commission with, with planning for fiscal 22 and beyond. Um, it, it, it's a fairly straightforward reporting amendment, but I, I want to thank everybody for considering it, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, is there a second to Commissioner Feldman's amendment? I second it. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now have a round in which commissioners can comment on or uh, ask questions. Um, and I, I strongly oppose this. Uh, and Commissioner Feldman, I realize this is a good faith attempt on your part uh, to incorporate the language of the statute. But what I think you've done is you've taken some stuff out of context. And I think you've left out some critical words. The critical words uh, were that we are to ensure to a maximum extent feasible that investigators are stationed at ports of entry. In other words, this was to increase staffing at the ports, not to track individual consumer products. Uh, we have a massive volume of consumer products under our jurisdiction that enter at the ports. And even with risk scoring, we actually screen only a small percentage of the products. Uh, so what we're really talking about, the 90% number, is port coverage, not product screen under the RAM. Uh, and if we were to try to do it according to the literal words of your uh, amendment, I'm afraid we'd need something like 10,000 port inspectors. Uh, one additional point, you call for a report on screening of possible violations of voluntary standards at ports. That's not something we typically do. Uh, what The only time that I'm aware of that we do it is when it's a 15J, which is more in the nature of a, uh, a rule. Um, and I guess the other thing is, this is information, uh, you, you talk about transparency, but this is not information that is made public. These are, these are confidential reports. And I have noticed that some of our confidential reports have been leaked in the past. And I hate to say it, this, this may well provide more information to be leaked. Um, and so uh, if you wanted to respond, or we could move on to any questions or comments that Commissioner Kay has. Uh, just the, the the I'm reading the statute right here uh, that, that we shall ensure that that commit that that inspectors shall be stationed with the goal of covering no fewer than 90 percent of all consumer products entering the United States that are risk scored in the risk assessment methodology system. That, that's not ambiguous at all what the congressional mandate is. And I think your read of this is, is fundamentally flawed. Well, I realize that you are tracking some of the language of the statute, which I think still leaves out the critical words. Investigators are stationed at ports of entry. This is not the most artfully worded uh, uh, statutory direction to us, but this is something that we have been implemented. We've made clear to the Congress that this is the way that we're implementing it. Uh, and I and I think that if we were to take your words literally, uh, you would stop the commission and have us do nothing but uh, inspect uh, products coming in through the ports. Respectfully, Bob, these aren't my words, they're Congress's words. Out of, yes, part, some of their words, but not the critical words, which to me still uh, pertain to investigator state ports of entry. That was what Congress was looking to. Uh, Commissioner Kay, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, I, um, I think that as long as uh, we continue to get briefed on these issues on a weekly basis, I'm comfortable with maintaining that. I will say that we're all at a bit of a disadvantage because we appropriately cannot discuss some of the aspects of uh, our ports work. And so that makes for probably a slightly stilted and awkward back and forth. And so I'll just leave it at that. But uh, again, as long as we continue to get our weekly briefings and we're provided with this information, I'm comfortable with the status quo. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Biaco. any questions or comments? I do. Um, uh, Commissioner Feldman, conceptually and uh, substantively, uh, I, I think there's a lot um, of validity to your proposed amendment. I object, however, to the process here. I think that what we're being asked to vote on is simply the budget um, and how exactly that money is going to be spent. And I'm not inclined to support a reporting requirement um, as part of that. I don't think it fits. Um, I also think that the, the, um, the language that Congress has given us speaks for itself. So respectfully, I, I'm, I'm going to um, not support it for, for just those reasons. I understand. Uh, if I may respond, I, I think that yes, there please. is a link between uh, b between uh, uh, reporting and uh, in, in the budget. I expect that at some point in the future that the commissioners are going to be called uh, to account for how we spent money to meet these new mandates, and uh, and and you know asking for reporting on this 
certainly it, it's not micromanaging. It, it's our job. I, I just don't want there to be any surprises. Again, I, I don't disagree with you substantively. This document, I just um, don't think it achieves in this document what you're trying to achieve. Um, I, I do think we should be getting as much information as possible. And I have always been a supporter of expanding our port inspectors and our, our equipment and so on and so forth. Um, but I'm not a big supporter of spending money on reporting requirements. I think that's part of the job. So thank you. If there are no more questions or comments, I will call the question. Uh, with respect to Feldman two, Commissioner Kay, how do you vote? I vote no. Uh, Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? No. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote no. Uh, the um, votes are three nay, one yay. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, two is not approved. Commissioner Feldman, uh, your third amendment, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Feldman three is an amendment that would add additional port inspectors at the key high volume ports if they're needed. Uh, we've all all four of us have, have supported expanding full-time port inspectors to conduct inspections at the, at the highest uh, volume ports of entry. Um, and the plan that's been proposed, frankly, does a, a fantastic job at, at focusing on e-commerce and expansion into ports where CPSC currently lacks coverage. Uh, but what the plan doesn't do is expand our, our strength at the key high volume ports. Uh, Congress directed the commission uh, to add staff at the key ports and to, to w w where feasible and to reach a, a 90% threshold of inspection. And, and I question, is there anything more key than our high volume ports? Uh, the plan as drafted adds four new inspectors uh, to four additional ports and two additional supervisors. Uh, but what my amendment would call for is to increase the number of port inspectors by up to 10 if we haven't met that 90% threshold uh, by the end of the current fiscal year. Uh, the amendment seeks to provide for uh, any staffing shortages that may come up in working toward uh, that goal, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, 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 it's a safeguard, essentially. Uh, again, I, I, would, I would thank you for your consideration, and if there's a second, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any questions that my colleagues have on this amendment. Thank you so much, Commissioner Feldman. Is there a second? I second it. Peter, you look like you wanted to say something additional at oh. this point. Okay. Um, again, I, uh, I appreciate the sentiment. I think that we're all supportive of expanding our port presence. And uh, even if we were to dramatically uh, expand our port presence, we'd still be falling short of what my notion is of what is needed to protect uh, consumers from products coming in through the ports. And I am delighted that we are looking to uh, set up uh, arrangements to address the de minimis shipments that are coming in uh, at specialized ports and not necessarily generally through the ma major ports. Um, but I have to say the uh, Feldman Amendment to me goes well beyond the mandate that's contained in the COVID legislation because it sets as a sort of an absolute number uh, meeting this 90% coverage, uh, and that's not what the Congress directed us to do. It also forces the immediate hiring of additional staff, uh, and I don't know what that definition, the definition of, of immediate is, but also let me, let me be clear. When Congress gave us this direction about the ports, it didn't say you have to station people at the ports. It says they must be stationed at or supporting uh, efforts at the ports, and your amendment does not include that that language, Commissioner Feldman. In other words, you've tied our hands so that these staff must be stationed at the ports, and that removes some important flexibility that we need in order to uh, meet our congressional mandate. And I go back to this notion about uh, voluntary standards. We don't uh, we don't inspect for voluntary standards for the most part. Uh, and I guess one other issue that I have, uh, probably a couple, is uh, you, you talk about key ports of entry, but I don't see a definition of what a key port of entry is. And what I'm afraid of is this opens up staff to endless second guessing about, well, this was a key port and the staff is saying, we didn't think it was a key port and I don't see a good definition. And also just in terms of the technicalities, 
if we got to September 30th and the day before we dipped below 90%, but we'd been at 90% before and we came uh, uh, above it, we still seem to be obligated to hire additional FTEs because we missed it by one day. Um, and I, I guess the other thing is that this is uh, ARPA's legislation to deal with the COVID crisis. I don't necessarily want to see staff locked, stationed at the ports. So uh, to me, this is micromanaging. It's, it's a worthy sentiment and it's one I fully support, but the exact wording of your amendment gives me a great deal of uh, difficulty. And Commissioner Feldman, if you wish to respond. I, I, I do have a response. Uh, first of all, the, the notion that that uh, the, the the notion that that keyboards is somehow uh, uh, coming from nowhere. I'm, I'm I'm reading a copy of the bill here, uh, and it specifically discusses additional CPSC surveillance personnel at key ports of entry. Now, when we've dealt with this in the past, uh, in most recently in the FY22 budget request, we talked about a, 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 a plus up to ports at, at our highest volume ports of entry. Uh, all of us are on record as, as, as supporting that. Um, and, and, and the notion that, that I'm, I'm ignoring the language of, of what's called for in, in uh, Title X here, uh, that it, it discusses uh, port personnel or uh, supporting efforts at the port, we're doing that. Uh, the plan as drafted uh, uh, certainly contains a number of provisions, and we just talked about all of the supporting staff that, that, that's being called for, that additional personnel. This amendment would layer on top of that uh, to address a, a shortfall at the port if it's needed. It's a safeguard. Okay. Uh, I would just simply say that when the Congress says key ports, we do, you're right, the, the commission staff has an interpretation of that term. But the fact is that I'm not clear that that's the term that you're using. Uh, and what I'm afraid of is that this opens them up not to their interpretation of what a key port is, but your interpretation. Um, well, rather than, than rather than adding uh, uh, ports uh, uh, personnel at, at 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 any of the ports that we're at, uh, we're opting to expand to ports where we currently have no presence. Frankly, low volume ports. Uh, that's a point of uh, disagreement among us. What we're doing is providing additional staff capability for dealing with ports at those moments when they would be needed, uh, and I think that's exactly the right approach, but not permanently stationing them at those ports. Uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Commissioner Feldman, if you have any additional response. Commissioner I'm just Kaye. concerned about the, 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 staff, the, the, the pace that I'm seeing. Uh, if, if staff continues at, at, at the pace that, that we're at, I'm concerned, uh, and, and we're doing a great job, the, the amendment won't take effect. Uh, it, it's conditional, and it would, it would simply add resources at the, at the areas where there's the highest probability of effect and impact during our busiest month. Those are our key high volume ports. Uh, thank you for that. Commissioner Kay, any uh, questions or comments? Uh, no questions. Uh, thanks for um, you know, another amendment to try to get to where we all wanna go. But I am comfortable that staff uh, has this covered, no pun intended, and uh, that it seems like they're well on their way, that there is enough flexibility that if it turns out that there are some type of bumps that we can revisit this issue. I don't think this is the final time that we're going to be looking at this. In fact, we're going to have many opportunities as this moves forward to look at it. And so I'm comfortable with staff's plan. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Biaco. any questions or comments? Uh, just a quick one. Again, I, I, um, I don't think we'll ever have enough people and equipment at the ports in this day and age. Um, and I certainly support putting more people and, and so forth. But I do think that, Peter, your amendment could be argued that it's, uh, that it's limiting. And so rather than get into, you know, whether it's conditional, whether it's limiting, whether it, it's consistent with what Congress said, I'm just, I'm going to rely on the language that Congress has given us. As you know, a lot of negotiation um, goes into those bills and um, you know whether we agree or not agree we are mandated to follow that and I want to keep it as broad as possible so uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on this one um, respectfully uh, thank you are there any additional questions or comments Commissioner Feldman no. okay 
If not, then uh, we will move to a vote. Uh, with respect to Feldman 3, Commissioner Kay, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? No. Uh, and I vote no. I'm sorry, did I? Commissioner Feldman, I apologize. Uh, how do I you vote? vote? Yes. Okay, uh, the votes are three nay, uh, one yay. Commissioner Feldman, three is not approved. Commissioner Feldman, may I ask that you move to Feldman, four? Yes. Uh, so Feldman, four is an amendment that would provide transparency with respect to our remedial screening. Uh, through no fort, uh, fault of our, our port and field inspectors, uh, we experienced a period where CPSC's in-person port inspection activity uh, declined during uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, Congress told us to focus on high-risk products, and I can't think of a riskier product category than those that made it onto store shelves uh, without their usual CPSC screenings for things like lead and small parts. Uh, during the mid-year one discussion, uh, I, I offered an amendment uh, asking for a plan, and I was assured that the work uh, here is, is, in fact, underway. Uh, it was suggested that discussion of, of, of that amendment would be better suited to mid-year two. Um, so I'm, I'm reproposing the amendment, albeit in a slightly different form. Uh, my amendment, Feldman 4, uh, would require staff to include in its weekly port and field staffing report that we all receive updates about the steps that uh, staff is taking and, and, and what we're finding. Uh, the information that, 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 that's called for here is part of the required congressional report that's due on June 27th, uh, and, and I, I just I don't want there to be any surprises. Um, my amendment is designed to ensure that there's transparency uh, and, and, and nothing more. Uh, again, thank everybody for consideration, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you so much. Is there a second to Commissioner Feldman's motion? I second it. Thank you so much. Uh, and Commissioner Feldman, uh, I, I agree that uh, it's important for uh, us to look to see what got in during uh, the early days of the pandemic. Uh, I have talked to staff and I think that this is a subject worthy of a briefing. I think they have done a brilliant job of tracking down stuff that may have come through the ports uh, and finding uh, vi uh, violative, excuse me, violative goods. And so uh, I'm, I'm really delighted to see that they're doing that. And that is something that I believe that uh, staff can brief us on. I do not agree that this is something that should be mandated in a report. Uh, first of all, it's adding unnecessary work. And it's also pointing in directions that I am afraid will dissipate the uh, incredible work that's being done by staff to address underserved communities. Uh, so I, I think that this expands what the Congress asked for, and I don't see the need to enshrine it formally in weekly reports. Uh, and so uh, I also am afraid that this, again, uh, opens staff up to uh, second guessing in ways that I find that make me uncomfortable. It says uh, they have to uh, address the remedial steps that are being taken, but that that's a term that could put them on the hot seat if they don't meet any particular commissioner's notion of what uh, remedial steps are. So I'm not going to support it, but I certainly support the sentiment that we need to address uh, violative goods that came in during the early days of the pandemic uh, and have a good comprehensive plan for addressing that. And I will say that uh, I'm really uh, delighted to see what staff has done. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, any response? I, 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 the, the only response that I would have is that as, as I have not received briefings about the, the work that staff is doing to conduct remedial screening, but the four of us as the agency's senior political leadership, we're stewards of the agency and the resource that it expends, and ultimately it's going to be the four of us that are called uh, to account uh, uh, for our, our meeting or or in or failure to meet uh the the requirements that uh that that that, that have uh, been set forward in, in statute that we're supposed to be following um it, it's important that we're informed about what staff spends its time working on right now i, I have i've received no information uh, on that front and requesting information uh that frankly should be shared without us having to request it uh it, it's not micromanagement it, 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 that's it's good sound management. Yeah, and if I could respond, that is information that the commission is entitled to. 
Uh, and as you know, before we submit any report to the Congress, th that will be circulated to the Commission for Commission uh, supervision. And so uh, we, this is information that we're entitled to. I think the staff has been in the process of developing this comprehensive plan and at an appropriate point, uh, staff will be uh, briefing the commission on it. The plan will be circulated for commission supervision. I don't know what that means. Congress directed the commission to submit the report. The four of us are gonna have to vote and sign off on this. I just don't want there to be any surprises. Uh, it's fair to say that there there you, there should not be any surprises, and and uh, I think that's exactly correct. Uh, Commissioner Kay, any questions or comments? Um, I don't have any questions for Commissioner Feldman. I will say that this was the amendment I spend the most time on the fence about. I agree with a lot of what Commissioner Feldman has raised in terms of the importance of having a regular understanding of our work in this area. I don't want to get too far into the decision making from last year, but I think it's fair to say, at least from my perspective, that the remedial work was a key component uh, for me in uh, the decision making that we made, meaning that we would have a comfort level, that we would do everything in our power to attempt to remediate the things that did slip through during the times when we didn't have full port coverage. And so I think it's completely fair of Commissioner Feldman to have an expectation that we would regularly be informed of what's happening in that area. And so my office has been getting weekly briefings that uh, have occurred with staff that are not specific to this, but include, include information about this topic. I'm requesting, Mr. Chairman, or, or uh, expecting that that will continue and that we can count on that. And then also, I think you suggested this might be a good topic for a closed compliance briefing. I think that I would support that if that's what you're proposing. Uh, and so I think that it's fair that we continue to be kept informed on a regular basis, uh, certainly orally, as to what staff is doing so that we can have an understanding of that. And I do think that's a fair uh, point to ask, and I am completely sympathetic to that. I'd be delighted to have a closed compliance briefing to address uh, this. Uh, as I say, uh, I don't know all the particulars of it because the staff has been working on that, but from what I've heard so far, I, I have been uh, pleased to hear. So I do think regular briefings on this are in order. I just don't feel it necessary to enshrine it in a uh, form. May I, may I interject? Yes, please. I don't. I don't want to deprive Commissioner Biakko of, of of her opportunity to 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 offer any comments that she has. Uh, so I, I don't want to dominate the conversation here. Uh, but if if hearing Commissioner Kay's uh, uh, line of questioning and in, in the discussion about uh, about closed compliance briefing, if there is a commitment on the table uh, for regular monthly compliance briefings on remedial action, I'd be more than happy to withdraw. Uh, with, withdraw this amendment. I make no such commitment about regular monthly meetings just to brief on this point. Uh, I think that may be addressing uh, it in ways that uh, are unnecessary. I would make a commitment to a commission closed compliance briefing and then to see whether we feel additional briefings on that uh, point should be do done. Commissioner Biakko. So what uh, I should let me be the chairman and I'll call on Commissioner Biacco. Um, what I struggle with on this amendment is that it is premised on, on the fact that um, some things may have gotten through during the early days of the um, pandemic. And what I remember, and I stand by our decision, was a unanimous decision by this very commission to protect our staff in the early days of the pandemic when nobody knew what was going on, how dangerous the virus was, could be. We didn't have um, uh, PPE. In fact, I think our agency actually donated the few pieces of PPE that we had to um, frontline workers, leaving us with zero. And so I, I feel what I'm hearing in your presentation of this amendment is that it's it corrects or is designed to correct something that we all voted on and I think correctly voted on. And so I can't I can't support it because of that premise. 
Okay, uh, hearing uh, no further questions or comments. Okay, if not, then I call the vote on Feldman 4. Uh, Commissioner K, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Bianco, how do you vote? Um, reluctantly, no. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote no. Uh, the votes are three nay, one yay. Uh, the amendment is not uh, agreed to. Uh, at this point, are there additional amendments before the commission before we move to uh, the vote on the mid-year uh, mid two? I have no additional amendments. Thank you so much. Having heard no further amendments or motions, we'll now turn to consideration of fiscal year 2021 mid-year two proposal as amended. Uh, after the vote, each commissioner will have 10 minutes for closing remarks, uh, but I want to make sure that anybody who wants to be heard briefly before we vote on the mid-year plan is heard. Uh, having heard no uh, further comments, I will now call the vote uh, to adopt fiscal year 2021 mid-year two plan as amended. Commissioner Kay, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the yeas are for the fiscal year 2021 mid-year proposal as amended has been approved. Uh, we will now provide commissioners uh, up to 10 minutes of closing remarks for those who care to make them. Uh, and uh, I have a very, very, very brief uh, set of closing remarks. First of all, I want to thank uh, CPSC staff for extraordinary work in developing the two mid-year packages. They're thoughtful, they're comprehensive, they're actually, for the most part, very easy to read. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do and we need lots of additional resources to do it. I'm truly grateful for the extra funding that we got in the American Recovery Plan Act. Uh, but I note that's only good for five years, and it actually falls short of what we need to do in the long run. So I am extremely hopeful that Congress will respond not just with ARPA, but with substantial increase in funding for the future. Uh, and I'm probably going to regret using this metaphor. Uh, CPSC may never get beyond being the runt of the regulatory agency litter, but uh, we need to be a bigger, more aggressive runt. And so I thank everybody again. Uh, Commissioner Kay, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, I can't top runt, but <laughs> I will say that uh, I very much appreciate the work by the staff, uh, especially, like I said, the quick and thorough work on trying to adapt to the bill passing. Uh, and thanks as well, Mr. Chairman, for your efforts and your staff's efforts in working with the Hill to formulate the $50 million package to make sure that it was going to meet critical needs. It, for many years, was a lonely road traveling uh, with my office and I on trying to both increase our budget substantially and as well as our port presence in particular. And so while I don't love the circumstances that led to this increase, I'm grateful that Congress finally recognized that we do need additional assistance both at the agency writ large, but especially at the ports. And I'm particularly pleased to hear what sounds like United support, uh, both for a substantially increased budget amongst the commissioners, as well as a substantially increased port presence. So I think both of those developments as they continue to occur are excellent for consumers and their safety. And also, I really appreciate the, the spirit of the dialogue, the fact that we can debate civilly uh, interesting topic and work our way through it. And then at the end of the day, especially on this package, reach unanimity. So thank you to my fellow commissioners and to your offices for the work. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioner Biacco, closing remarks? On this rare occasion, Bob, I don't have anything to say that I haven't already said. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and Commissioner Feldman, any closing remarks that you have? I do. I also want to reiterate uh, my appreciation for staff's work on, on, on the proposed spending plan for mid-year two. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we all share the commission's goal of, of, of protecting American consumers. 
Um, it, it was my hope that uh, the mid-year process would occur holistically, and I, I remain puzzled as to why it didn't. Uh, we, we, we could have done this in one piece, but uh, that wasn't the case. Instead, we were asked to uh, approve part one without knowing what was in part two, uh, but that's all in the past. And, and turning to the mid-year specifics, uh, I, I'm pleased that the, the package takes steps to address uh, the congressional mandates that were, uh, some of the congressional mandates that were included in the uh, FY21 appropriations bill. Um, in particular, I commend staff for starting the process on establishing an e-commerce team, uh, something that, uh, that, that I've long advocated for. Um, uh, but, but make no mistake, uh, Congress didn't provide this extra funding because it thought we were doing a good job or that it agreed with the decisions that the commission had made uh, throughout the pandemic. Um, again, I, I'm glad that, uh, that, that we were able to get to yes on this bill. I think that there's more work that needs to be done, including uh, uh, it, it, when, when we return to, uh, to, to, to consider the, our, our next operating plan. Uh, but in, in, in closing, I, I want to thank staff for their hard work and uh, to my fellow commissioners for uh, considering my amendment. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, uh, we, we want to thank staff uh, for their participation. Thanks, Steve McGugan, for making sure that the technical uh, functioning of the meeting came off uh, smoothly, and it seems to have done so. So with that, uh, I am not going to gavel, but I will call this meeting to, to a close, and we will convene the, as a commission in a closed uh, session at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So thank everybody. Thank you.